Welcome to the uh, third episode of 20 Minutes with a Pro. Uh, today we have Greg Barsby. I'll let you introduce yourself. What's up, everyone? My name is Greg Barsby. I'm originally from Grass Valley, California. Uh, I started playing disc golf in 1993 when I found a golf disc um, in, in the park that my parents moved near when I was six years old. So from there, um, I kept playing and here we are today. So really happy to join you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Did you really find your first disc on a you know park nearby? Yeah. Yes, I uh, I was riding my bike with my neighbor and I found a green cyclone. Yeah, I think it's like DGA or something, right? Cyclone. That's a or... discraft disc. Oh, discraft. Okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I haven't I haven't heard of that cyclone that much. <laughs> Actually, if you've thrown the passion. I don't know if you've seen that new one. That I've seen it. I've seen it, but I haven't thrown my, myself. I'm pretty sure that that is the cyclone mold and they kind of rebirthed it. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that's how I found a disc or that's how I found disc golf or disc golf found me. And um, then my neighbor and I, he, he knew what it was because he had lived there. So we kind of started to play a little bit. And then uh, we bought our first disc. We shared an AVR putt and approach. Mm -hmm. uh, two, two chain AVR, one of the really old ones. And then it kind of just snowballed from there, you know, it was, it was in the backyard all the time. Luckily, my parents had moved next to the school that their idea was to get as close to school so we could walk to school. And there was also the park there, which the disc golf course was right there. So mm -hmm. it worked out really well. I played a lot through my adolescence, um, turned pro at 16. How's the off season been for you? Have you managed to get some rest? <laughs> this is actually the busiest time of the season for me. Um, just getting plans together, trying to um, format a schedule. I made a recent purchase, which I'm really excited about. Um, I found a really nice recreational vehicle. Um, it's a little bit bigger than what we've been traveling in. We've, my girlfriend and I have been in the van for the last three years, and it's the van is great. It it, it serves its purpose, and I and I love the van. It's it's awesome. I can pull into a parking spot and, um, it's just very easy in and out. You know, I can go in the city, um, and we host our events out of the van, which is cool. But for those long three month journeys, you know, like those, those really long kind of expeditions, I wanted something a little bit more. It's a place to take a shower, go to the restroom, you know, normal stuff. <laughs> yeah, of course. <clears throat> I've heard I've heard so much this year that a lot of players, you know, Jeremy as well, bought the new. I think not the not the next RV, but but the bigger car and uh, uh, like uh, like a trailer to you know attach to it and just bigger space for everyone. And yeah, it can get interesting on the road in the van. You know, it's um, getting a getting an RV will kind of change the process a little bit. Um, the way that I've kind of operated the last few years just just because it's it's not as easy to find a parking spot or um so i've still got some learning to do i mean it's it's kind of a steep learning curve um like what vehicle am i going to am i going to drag a car behind it or you know i might even do like the little thailand scooter behind it mm -hmm. um, just come zipping up to my tea times on that but we'll see we'll see how it goes um you know every i'm not planning on bringing it out till uh june so mm -hmm. i'm not rushing into anything um i bought an older one it's a 1995 uh, with 26,000 miles on it i got a really good deal mm -hmm. and um, it's in good shape this one was uh custom ordered with no slides so it's basically like a bus but it has all of the internal organs like an rv right it has it has mm -hmm. the plumbing so it's kind of, it's kind of that mix mash and, um, it just worked perfect. It was close to home, which was even better. I didn't have yeah. to drive too far to, to get it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't really, I haven't really, um, announced that to anybody, you know, I don't, I, I don't think really that's it now. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to, we're going to be outfitting it. I'm retrofitting the, the build and I've set a budget for that. We're, we're going to be working towards, you know, new flooring, new paint. Um, new furnishings, right? Mm -hmm. Just just stuff that'll modernize the, modernize it and, and make it look clean. Yeah, and it's a long journey <laughs> building these things out. There's yeah. a lot of things to it. So yeah, uh, how has your you know overall preparation like this golf wise uh, to the season been? Have you been playing a lot or played any tournaments? 
Um, I have. Yeah, I've been playing a little bit. Um, I did take a vacation, but I also played as well. I went out to Hawaii to visit my sister, which was really nice. And um, I played the Big Island Open, had a blast, just had a ball over there. Spent a couple of weeks um, on the islands and kind of get away from everything else. Be, um, you know, try to clear my head and, and come back and, and really get on it because Vegas, I mean, the days are just flying away. The, the weeks are just flying by. I'm like, man, I'm two weeks away mm-hmm. from, from, the, from the tour starting. Although being that I live in Texas now, it's really nice to have the, the Texas swing in March because mm-hmm. basically I'll just fly to Vegas and then fly home, and then I'll do all the Texas swing in March, which I'll be at home for most all of that. Waco is about two and a half hours from my home. Yeah, Texas States is about 30 minutes from my home, so um, that's my home course. And then um, I'll go out in April, but I think uh, chances are I'm going to take the van. You know, I'm not I'm not ready to unveil the RV yet, because um, when I do, it's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can bet it's, it's, it's going to look awesome <laughs> for sure like yeah. know, knowing your style like the b classes and everything you're gonna make it look especially rad i think <laughs> i'm i'm looking forward to it i'm you know i'm in the process of a rebrand with the barsby line okay so so ideally i'll kind of stick with those colors um mm-hmm. with the new color scheme and and you know maybe do some special stuff i'd really like to get a custom um what do you call those an awning i'd really like to get a custom printed awning which would just make the rv pop but We'll see. I'm kind of taking it day by day. Um, yeah. Can stretch ahead. <laughs> but as far as preparation, um, we had a really mild December. I played almost every day in December. So, um, you know, I played down in Florida. I tied tied with Thomas Gilbert there at the end of regulation. Yeah, yeah. Winning. Um, but then I, I won the So-So Classic, short and So-So Classic, and then I, uh, I won the Big Island Open. But those are small events just kind of keeping my skills sharp, uh, trying to get a little bit more pop. I really mm-hmm. want to get my, my hips around as I, as I age, it's not as easy anymore. So, um, just want to get another few feet on off the tee and keep my accuracy really high. I think that's the most important thing, you know, get some putts and knock them down. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, like you mentioned, you know, just keeping yourself warm, like, uh, you know, playing a little bit here and there, it's, it's really important and getting some off time, like you said, you know, a few weeks on the island in Hawaii is definitely, you know, even though you play some tournaments and so on, it's definitely relaxing. Uh, you know, it oh, for has sure. to be. Yeah. It's, and, and I came home to a mountain of work, which, which I knew I would, but that's just the way, you know, that's the way it goes. So maybe about the news this year, um, what do you think about all the news from different you know, players and, and um, suppliers out there? You know, everybody changing their sponsorship and so on. Yeah, there's a lot going on, man. Uh, yeah. I think the biggest surprise for me was Kona. Super happy for her, by the way. I feel like I got my Kona sticker right here. <laughs> awesome, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, Kona's a friend. Uh, super happy for for what she's going for. She works really hard, her and Colton both. So super stoked for them. Um, Ricky leaving, you know, I, I mean, that's just what it is. You know, Dynamic offered him a, a contract he couldn't refuse. So that's pretty simple. I mean, we're all we're all commodities in a growing game. You know, there's a lot of good players. And then there's also good promoters and people that mm-hmm. represent the sport well. You know, I mm-hmm. try to cover all the bases if I can, but I can only do so much. I'm the only move I've really made so far. Uh, I left Upper Park after seven years. So all the best to them. And mm-hmm. I'm just moving forward. I've got I've got a full plate, and I'm just focused on getting to Georgia, and getting that first major. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's it's you know everybody's calling. I think at least, but yeah, I think overall the same thing. It's it's amazing to see players being recognized for for Ricky, for example. I feel that um, you know he had his major like the world championship titles playing with Dynamic. So I think he like. That's true. Uh, uh, he wants to go back to that, and he, I think he feels a little bit more at home with um, Dynamic, maybe, or something. I, I just think, might... I think he's comfortable there, right? I mean, yeah, he won it with Latitude stuff, and, you know, good on him. I just felt the, uh, those new felons they have, they feel great. My buddy Lou, I, I mean, they feel awesome. I'm super happy for Ricky. 
yeah, nowadays, uh, anyway, like all the companies are producing, I think, very, very nice new discs and all of them are feeling a lot better. And, you know, same for Innova as well. Like I have part of my production is, or what I throw is Innova. I like, you know, actually I like to throw the older destroyers more than newer ones, but I have the Calvin Heimberg one, for example, which is really overstable for me. Right. Which is, <laughs> which is crazy, but, uh, and I have a Bars Eagle as well, so... <laughs> The One man. Of them, you know, <laughs> if you like the old destroyer, you should check out the Scorpius. That's my uh, that's my yeah yeah one. I've heard like that, but it's not really popular here in, here in Estonia, so it's you need to order it from like US or somewhere. So yeah, it's a great disc. I mean, um, you know, Millennium's really the the original. Like if you could imagine Discmania fifteen years before Discmania, they were the they were the OGs in premium plastic. You know, so Millennium has a long lineage and history. I'm actually the uh, I'm the team captain or the team manager for the entire team Millennium. My girlfriend and I run that. So they they promote their they they put their money in their players for promotion. You won't see very many Millennium ads or whatnot, and mm -hmm. uh, that's just what it is. We're working forward. I mean, it's a in, it's a family run company. It's a small mm -hmm. company. So we've been having fun, but I'm really really fond of these new 1.2 Scorps. Hopefully, we can sort that out and get some of those to Estonia because. I know Estonia from from what I know. I know that Vili Pippo came down to Estonia and showed all you guys how to throw the forehand. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a might story be, I know. <laughs> that might be uh, a lot of Estonian players throw a lot more forehand, like you mentioned. Like you know, we have Silverlat, who is like the biggest forehand forehand thrower out there, and you know, Albert throws quite far and. But it's it's like the more I watch tournaments, the more I can see that Estonians actually play quite a lot of forehand in that sense. I mean, look, Christian Christian throws them far too. Yeah, uh, I've noticed that right away with, when I went to Estonia. They have good forehands. Um, I consider myself a forehand expert, and that's part of the reason why I love that the Scorpius. It's it's not as overstable as some of the new destroyers, right? Some yeah, of the yeah, newer yeah. ones, especially after the Macbeth retooling, which I think was in. Uh, 2014 and 15 was um, they beefed them up. It got more overstable. Mm -hmm. So like I would compare some of the, some of the Scorpius, especially the new 1.2 runs to like the old SDS is something this, this new run has a very nice pop top and it'll pop up and go flat for a little and then hook. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited to put it to work. I think it's going to be a winner this year in the bag. It's uh, I threw it yesterday out in the field and I'm just loving it. I'm like, Oh man, yes this um, this one flies perfect for me yeah and i don't throw i don't throw super super far i don't throw uh, i mean what what's super far these days i mean i could throw 525 feet but that's not super far anymore uh, yeah it's... <laughs> i don't i don't throw the fastest like and i don't have the most spin so if you're if you're a guy out there that throws with a whole lot of torque the scorpius might bend up for you whereas for me it likes to pop up and fly and then hook which mm -hmm. is exactly what I'm looking for out of the box. Something that's overstable, dependable, but I can still really get on it and it'll pop up and fly a long way. Yeah, you know? it kind of looks, you know, for me, it's, you know, the same. I don't throw that far, but uh, but uh, I throw the same way, I think. Not with yeah. the most torque and, you know, not the most spin maybe perhaps, but but yeah, I like to throw a little bit understable ones uh, so that they pop up and then, you know, hook up basically. And look, it doesn't uh, matter how far you throw if you throw it right where you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 that's that's what I hope for as well. <laughs> um, do you have any tournaments planned in Europe this year? I do. Um, Sula Open and then the European Open. But those mm -hmm. are subject to change. I don't know exactly how, um, you know, how the world's working right now. I'll probably have to jump through some flaming hoops to get over there. But... Um, I would love to come play European Open. Obviously, it's, it's uh, one of my favorite places to play. And I also love Sula as well. Mm -hmm. um, very, very fun place to play. And and just a, a great group of guys over there in, at Sula. It looks like, um, you know, like a destination this year. Like a lot of um, players are touring our town from US and, and so on. And the European Open, of course, same thing, basically. It's, uh, you, you know, it's a major tournament still. And at least here in, for us in Europe, it's the biggest one. Yeah. Right. So yeah, uh, it's on the radar. I definitely want to come. It's hard to go in and out of countries now. I mean, I would love to come over and do a, an extended European tour again, mm -hmm. kind of like the, 
kind of like the Cali challenge tour Philo and I did, mm-hmm. um, but I just don't see it feasible right now. So I probably just come over for the couple weeks, maybe three. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's it. I mean, there's so many tournaments here in the U S there's, you know, endless options to go out and play tournaments and, and go promote and all these things, you know, going to Europe takes, um, time, energy, and money. So let's talk about, you know, you already briefly mentioned the Cali tour, uh, that you did in Estonia. Um, yeah. you know, we, we briefly discussed before as well, you know, the Estonian tour that you did here and, you know, the tournaments that you've played here. What do you remember the most about, you know, being here in Estonia? It's got a ton of good memories. Um, you know, walking around in, in Tallinn with, uh, with friends is always cool. Um, old town, but then going out to like Tartu, that was cool. Mm-hmm. Can't remember which course it is. Uh, is that the one in Tartu? It's like up on the hills. Yeah, I That's think it's, it's Tartu Elva. Um, perhaps. Yeah, is that the one? Kevin yeah, I and, think. I know Kevin and... Um, Uh, James went over there and played a played a bigger tournament one year. Was that the same course? Maybe it's Alutagus actually, or Mad Agus. It's it's one of those two. It's in eastern Europe, eastern no, 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 Estonia. No. It's, it's it's not Medagus. Ah, no, okay. I've been to Medagus, and that's an awesome place too. I love those guys. By the way, shout out to those dudes. Those guys are awesome, man. We ate yeah, at that dude. lady's. Uh, we ate at the ranch at the, at her farm. Some <laughs> of the best food, man. So good. Um, no, what tournament, man? What? <laughs> I don't remember. I don't remember the towns. I just, I just remember this one course being really sweet. And I came in with like a really good round. And there was, I can't remember the one guy. He's, he's like the really good player out there. He said, so you, you, you never played the course. I said, no. And he said, do you think you're going to win? I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I made a pot on the last hole, beat Philo by a stroke. <laughs> I think it maybe it was it the Cali tour. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think it was actually uh, Foremäki, Foremä, maybe. It's like up That's... and down the hills. I just remember a few holes, like in particular, like one, you have to hit the gap and then it goes out and then way down the hill. You have to like throw it way down this hill. Yeah, yeah and get... the basket is on the right side, right? Yes, yeah, correct. exactly. That's the yeah. course. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's the same course. It's it's Foremäki. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty hilly, I would say. <laughs> I loved it. I mean, that's that like, that's kind of where I grew up being from Northern California. We have uh, maybe 45 minute drive and you're at 5,000 feet elevation. What's that? I don't even know how many days. 2,500 something right. meters. 3,000 <laughs> kilometer maybe yeah. or uh, 3,000 meter. meters. And, yeah. then, um, and then we'd be down at sea level an hour the other way so i got to i got to grow up on a nice terrain of of courses from mountainous to valley um so when i got to estonia and saw this this course i was like man this place is sweet the other one um there's another private course we played too is really really fun um why am i space i follow these guys on instagram i just (laughs) (laughs) what is the name i can't remember any of the names player names that was great uh you mean the player names or the course names uh the course name Yeah, I think one of them is Tahtvere, maybe also in southern Estonia, near Vorameki, uh, where you played, most likely. Uh, but yeah, it's... <laughs> I have no idea. I yeah, can't but, remember. Philo, yeah, Philo knows this stuff. I don't know this stuff. I just, I yeah, just it's get a few, on the plane. You know, <laughs> your few years back already as well. Again, you know, it's three and a half years ago already, so it's it's been quite some time. And you played, I think, yeah, you mentioned you played in Madagos as well, uh, which is, um, you know, a sweet course, I think. And Timo, who's the, usually the TD uh, around on Madagos and Dalotagos, he's actually our president of uh, of the Disc Golf Association here in Estonia right now. So We love Timo. Yeah. We love Timo. We love you, bro. Thank you. We miss you. You come to the United States. We'll take care of you. Sounds good. Um But who were your like favorite players when you were here? Um, like you, of course, know Kristin and Albert, but uh, any local mm-hmm. ones? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm huge Kristin and Silver fan. You know, love those guys. It's it's been cool. I've known Silver for well, probably close to five years now. Both of them. So it's it's been great to see um, their growth and and them being able to expand and play golf here in the states. It's it's always really fun. Um, Albert, you know. I like to call him the pipsqueak. 
<laughs> Why so? Yeah, he's just small, you know, he's tiny. <laughs> tiny guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh man, it's just yeah, I lo- I love playing with with those dudes. We we all played a practice round at Deglo this year. I just kind of joined up with Albert and Kristen and uh, Silver. It was just super fun. Nothing but laughs. I just really enjoy playing with them and being able to kind of see it from their perspective, you know, when they're here in the States, you know, I realize that they're a long way from home and there's a lot of, there's a lot of hard work and I wouldn't say sacrifice, but there's a lot of compromise that comes with, you know, touring and being that far from home. Obviously Kristen has a daughter Yep. and um, you know, that, that takes its toll. So I, I have a lot of respect for that and, uh, and that dedication. Mm-hmm. You know. yeah that's definitely you know the case and you know we saw last year as well there are still quite a lot of hoops and you know actually Kristen and Silver had to turn back from you know <laughs> travel <laughs> like they made the whole like two weeks plus in you know outside Estonia and then they had to come back which is like you know just how it works nowadays and but as I hear it, it's supposed to get better soon Ah, we hope so. I mean, yeah, that was a bummer. Obviously, everybody wanted to see Kristen come over for U.S. Women's, but um, I mean, that's the way it goes. It's it's cool. I'm I'm looking at a lot of posts from from the Euros, and there's going to be a lot of them coming over. Our Norwegian friends are coming. You know, the Finns are coming. Uh, the Estonians are coming. the The Icelandic snowman will be here. <laughs> so I'm really happy to you know, and I'll do everything I can when those guys come over if they need a if they need a hand or place to stay i'm sure that most of them are getting stuff handled but Mm -hmm. you know i try to i try to lend that hand forward i've been i've been lucky through the years i've I've toured this is uh year 16 of touring for me so i've done it a few times (laughs) yeah being around the block as as you say in the u.s yeah yeah you know and just, just having friends and and being able to kind of you know my favorite some of my favorite parts of touring is just having a barbecue in the backyard, you know, at, at friends' places after rounds and, and having a, a jovial little crew with you that that's there to enjoy and, and we're doing it together, you know. Yeah, that that's definitely sounds uh, amazing. And you know, it's it's about the relaxed time, not you know, you know, sweating on a course all the time and you know, just sit down and talk to each other and you know be there for the you know yeah people basically. you have to live your life. You have to yeah. live your life too. And disc golf it, it obviously means so much to all of us. Um, but then, you know, it's nice to kind of take a breather where, you know, we get to cool off the course. Yeah. And this year, you know, it's going to be especially like good in that sense that, you know, Albert, for example, you know, announced his whole year in US and he's participating all the big tournaments basically that you have over there. And, I can't uh, wait, dude. I can't wait to put him down. I'm going to do an arm <laughs> wrestling contest first. I'm going to. We need uh, to make sure it. it's going to be on tape. <laughs> <laughs> No oh, man, I love I love giving that guy I love giving that guy a hard time. I don't know if you heard our new FBO team player, uh, Katie Tatte. Oh yeah, I know Katie. Yeah. yeah. So so she's uh, she actually got you know a deal um, this uh, off season and uh, she's uh, starting with you guys in Las Vegas. I think is the nice really so sweet. She's, She's gonna have at least the first part of the tournament, or uh, you know, the tour in the US. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the second part of the tour and or how they're planning. So it's, it's, it's a big you know, commitment too, right? I mean, yeah. I don't know. Is this? I don't know Katie that well. I mean, I've talked to her a couple of times, but it's a long commitment, right? If you want to go and do the whole year, I mean, then, then you're in. And I've done it a few times where it's like, I'm on the road for 300 days a year. You're just kind of in frisbee world and. Mm-hmm. And that's a lot of commitment. I don't know if she's ever been to the U.S., but I'm super excited. I'm glad that she's yeah. coming over and yeah, getting that experience. Uh, but you mentioned quickly, you know, that you jumped on around with with Arbert and Silver and Kristin in Diglo. Um, you know, my question comes from you know about seeing things differently. What do you think is the biggest difference with between maybe U.S. disc golf and you know European disc golf? So you know, you mentioned you see. You want to hear them how they see in the courses and how they behave basically do you see the well, difference in there um maybe not from estonia as much because there's a lot of woods i mean the Finns and the estonians right there they're pretty mm. v- well versed in the woods a lot of courses are in the woods whereas a lot of the tour these days isn't as much in the woods and i think that's because of the camera crews um, because of the live feeds and um, i kind of wish we would spend more time in the woods 
So mm-hmm. it's fun, um, you know, on the few holes that we did play at Deglo that have tight lines, um, just just working your lines, and you kind of get to see how, kind of get to see the the origins of how someone's game comes together, right? Mm-hmm. Like how Albert throws those mid range turnover shots. Or how Silver's going to kind of slip a sidearm straight through and then let it fade uh, where Albert throws a backhand. So it's cool to see. Um, I think a big difference is is the um, just the amount of casual players. I think um, there's a lot of casual players in Estonia, but being that it's a small country, um, the numbers aren't as much. I think the percentage might be there, but maybe not the, the numbers. Like these guys can go anywhere and show up to a course and have fans Mm -hmm. you know and 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 have people that have either followed their journey or are rooting for them and stuff so i think it's i think it's really cool and um and i hope it's an honor for them to come out and be able to play golf and meet these meet a lot of people that you know whose lives they've impacted Um, i think that's like the biggest thing nowadays because when i started there was no instagram there's no media Mm -hmm. i had to I had to like search, I had to like search the internet for disc golf videos, you know? Yeah, it was actually you know, funny as you mentioned it. I was looking at uh, Ken Klaimo's uh, website uh, the other day. You know, if you look at the website right now and think about, you know, when it was made or when it was, you know, last, uh, you know, even anything done with it, it's, it's most likely going to be ages ago and it just looks. Yeah. It's it's like you said, you know. It's uh, I think it's the early days when you started, or even before that, maybe even. You, you never know. And you know, I was trying to reach out to him as well, but it was you know, it's a little bit hard in that sense. Kenny is a tough guy to get a hold of if you don't. If, if he's kind of a need to know basis kind of guy, and um, I mean he's the greatest, and he's put in he put in his time. He worked really hard and he's just been raising his daughter. I get, I get questions about that a lot. Like, you know, what's going on with Climo? I saw him last month or a couple months ago when I went down to, to Florida, actually my girlfriend's mom moved just North of him. So mm-hmm. I might be seeing Kenny a little bit more, but it was really cool. We went out and played golf. He doesn't play too much. He'll still play and he still throws mm-hmm. well, but he went out and, and gave me a personal tour of his new course. Um, Cliff Stevens gold, which was really cool. I had to kind of pinch myself. I was like, I called the champ and, and we're out here playing. And it's just he and I, and, and my girlfriend, which was really, really cool. I was like, you know, it's not every day you get to do that champs, but you know, he's a good guy. I've known him for a long, long, long time. You know, he's one of my, uh, he's one of my heroes when I was a little kid. So it's cool. Yeah. I can give him a call. Yeah, that sounds like an a really amazing experience and just yeah. you know fun fun day out in on on the course. The game is is taking its steps. You know, it's re- it's very cool to see. You know, you're seeing a lot of young guys that that are coming up now. It's it's really really fun to to watch and speculate and see. You know, which one's gonna break through or or you know who's gonna be the new new really good player who's 15 right now in three years. So, yeah. Look, one thing one thing before. Before we switch gears, I just want to say, you know, it's great to see that Estonia and Finland and a few of these countries, the young, the young people are taking the game seriously. I took the game, I took the game really seriously. I mean, all the way up, I mean, I still do to a certain extent. I kind of have to laugh some things off now because I've been through the highest highs and the lowest lows. But, you know, here in the States, we don't have, we don't have some of those after, either after school programs or, um, organized sports like football or baseball or you know those sports have this set establishment on how on how things are done there's a regimen and stuff whereas disc golf doesn't really have that so it's awesome to see more kids in the states doing it as well but especially over in finland and and estonia you know you got a lot of young young guys with with serious potential and athletic skills that are that are taking it seriously like it's their first sport you know and i just want to say that's super cool to see like i said it's fun to speculate because there's so many good players i feel honored you had me on today it's really really cool it's fun to it's fun to talk and think you know we live on a completely different side of the world but 
I mean, we we're probably doing a lot of the same things going out and going out in the wilderness and throwing our frisbees around, you know. Yeah, even though you, like I showed you, the weather is a lot different. <laughs> I feel for you guys, man. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I can imagine. Like in Texas, it's most likely you don't ever see snow, right? Actually, funny enough, we saw snow last week. Oh, okay. I went from Hawaii to the indoor experience in Dubuque, Iowa, which was freezing cold. And then the and then the cold followed me down. <laughs> so it did snow, but nothing like last year. I don't know if you heard. I don't know if any of uh, your followers have heard about the snow apocalypse that happened last year. Oh, it was terrible. It was horrible. And, and you know, people died. Like this isn't, it, it wasn't a joke. To break it down, Texas has its own power grid system. Mm -hmm. The United States has its own grid. Texas is a separate grid. And um, there's multiple grids inside the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you that the state of Texas is absolutely gigantic. It's probably mm -hmm. bigger than Estonia. I would imagine it is. But we have our own, we have our own uh, power source internal. Um, so when, when a snowpocalypse happened last year, this was a storm that got down to, you know, I mean, it was eight degrees a couple of days. So probably, you know, negative six Celsius or something, mm -hmm. you know, very, very, very cold for here. And um, houses here are meant to keep heat out not in because mm. i'll bet you the average summer temperature here is over 30 degrees celsius i don't know how mm. hot that is fahrenheit but i'm guessing probably closer to 35 to mm. like 38. so every, a lot of stuff shut down right it wasn't just one or two days like it rained it froze then it snowed everything was shut down mm -hmm. the, the grocery store up the street shut down nobody can get there no um because texas doesn't have the infrastructure built to deal with snow like a like a michigan does or like a, a minnesota does we don't have sand trucks and plows and all of that stuff that that a that a state would have if they had snow like texas doesn't have that so mm -hmm. it shut the place down people had no power i didn't have power for five days luckily i have a, a wood you know i have a wood stove so we stayed warm but it was really, really messed up, man. Yeah. Well, you guys are used to it. Now, like where, where I grew up in the foothills, like if I drove up, I live an hour from Lake Tahoe when I, where I grew up. So I would go up the hill to go snowboarding and, you know, up there, there's, yeah, five meters of snow. But then as you, as you crawl back down, you know, there wasn't as much snow in the foothills. So it's funny. I got to see that both worlds, but now in Texas, I mean, there's no mountains out here. Ain't nobody mm -hmm. snowboarding. Uh, so when it does snow, it is cold. It is just prairie cold. Mm. We're talking just those icy winds. They feel like blades going into you. you just, oof. Um, it's still been pretty cold the last few nights, but it's starting to get warmer and warmer every day. I think, I think yesterday we got up to 60 Fahrenheit and right around freezing mm -hmm. in the, so it's still pretty chilly for us, but nothing, nothing comparatively to what you guys deal with. It's like not even, it's not even comparable. I mean, I can't imagine being in Estonia in the winter unless I was doing some snowboarding, you know. Yeah. Maybe but that's we don't my have any hills. We don't have any hills. Really? <laughs> <as well. laughs> the biggest, the highest, the, the tallest mountain or hill that we call, you know, is like 314 meters high. Okay, well, the maybe highest. I'm going to Finland to go to snowboard. <laughs> yeah, in Finland, you have a couple of uh, like real mountains already. So that makes <laughs> kind of much, but it's more cold, colder out there. So <laughs> be, be careful. I, I think I'm, I think that's my next vacation. Like my next real vacation will be go snowboarding in Finland, you know, and then of yep. course with the sauna. Uh, but let's get back to disc golf in that sense. <laughs> All right. What's the biggest tournament that you are waiting for the most this year? Champions Cup in Georgia in April. Uh, I think I think there's as good a chance as any for me to pick up um, a major win this year um, there. And then obviously the U.S. Open has been um, eluding me. And I'd like to go there and, and put my best foot forward and play some of my best golf. Other than that, you know, I'd like to play a little bit better this year. I'd like to get my, my putting was really, really poor last year. I played, um, I would consider last year a, a bad year for me. And wasn't a good year so I'm just trying to put my best foot forward and stay focused on getting my putts in the basket you know working on my putting technique knowing that the world championship is in Emporia this year I know it's going to be very windy so I have to kind of make some adjustments to my putt 
um, to be able to beat the wind mm -hmm. because putting is ultimately the name of the game, right? You can throw the disc as far as you want, as good as you want. If you can't make it in the basket from close, it's, you know, it's really frustrating. And, and last year was uh, uh, pretty frustrating for me. So that's kind of, you know, I'm looking forward to any tournament I'm putting really good at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have always said that, you know, driving is the fun part, but putting is where you win the competitions and, um, you know, you make one good putt, it can change that the course of, of where your head's going, you know, and and it's frustrating when you miss from close when you know you should make it because then it just, you know, your head's down. You know, it's it's not as easy to climb out of that when your confidence isn't there. So confidence really breeds more confidence, especially on the putting green, you know, and and um, just having a good mindset. That's that's my other big goal. Like I don't really care where I don't really care where I'm playing this year. You know, the goal is to come in with a with a good mindset to to go and play and compete and like that's all you can do but i'm certainly looking forward to champions cup that's a good course you know the wr jackson course in in uh in georgia great lines you know pretty fair well and i think i think uh the best putter will win there i think that throwing the disc well is obviously important but it's mm -hmm. it's very putter friendly course and i know a lot of the players just love to play it and we were all super bummed out when the hall of fame classic um, wasn't going on for a couple of years. So mm -hmm. I think the tour and, and a lot of the players were all really happy to just to be going back there because we know how good the course is. So let's talk about maybe some newer players who would you really looking forward to perform this year? I think Gannon, I, Gann, I've known Gannon since he was 12, <laughs> you know, and, and his game's come along so much. He's a, he's a bright young kid. And um, yeah, I look forward to hopefully playing with him a little bit and just watching him play and, and watching him grow and progress as a player. I think Gavin Rathbun is going to have a good year. Um, he's coming off an injury. Gavin's a very, very talented young man. There's a few other guys, you know, I think, um, I think my buddy, Luke Sampson, Luke's going to be going hard this year. I don't know if you've heard of Sampson, but he's an absolute monster. Great kid. Um, super I think he was actually, Luke was playing in Maricopa Open as well. I think. Yeah. Yeah. He's already yeah. on tour. He's playing them all. Yeah, exactly. So I think he was actually playing like lead lead card like last round or something. So I saw him. I saw uh, him ace the wrong basket. I'm like, man, I get, I get bro. What are you yeah. doing? <laughs> and, and and same, yeah, exactly. And the same round, he actually, I think he hit the, another player's disc, which both were flying in the like, or I think they were near ground. That one of them was coming from hole 19, and he was throwing oh on hole gosh. like 14. And <laughs> like Luke again, I was like, you know. One guy twice around. What are you gonna do? When it ain't your day, it ain't your day. You know? Yeah, yeah, it just <laughs> um, happens. Yeah, Luke, Luke's awesome. Um, another, another young talent, Ian Burchett. Ian's really good. Um, I think you're gonna hear more and more about him. John Willis, John Willis. He's a Texas shooter. He's local to me. He's gonna be hitting the road again this year, doing it. So, you know, look forward to watching these guys progress and grow as players and as people. Um, you know, a couple other young kids that that aren't, aren't nearly as well known. You know, this, there's a young kid, Dawson Snelling out of the Quad Cities. Um, really like Dawson. He's getting, I know, I've known his dad for a while and I've known Dawson since he was a little kid. So um, I think, you know, he's, he's not on the radar yet, right? People don't know that Dawson can really, really play. And, and I think the next couple of years are gonna be really important, you know, and, and formative years for him to see if, the, if, he wants to take it one step further. So Nathan Delisle, remember that name, Nathan Delisle. He's a young kid from Maine. Um, very, very good player. Very, very skilled on both sides beforehand, backhand. I think you're going to hear more and more about Nathan Delisle as time goes on. And then obviously Uriah, Uriah Kelly, another young kid working his way up. I think Uriah is almost maybe 14 or 15. So you know, it's fun to it's fun to be able to tour and, and get to meet some of these young guys and really kind of, you know, I played around with uh, Uriah and Nathan, and it's just awesome to be able to kind of play and, and pass on the torch to these dudes, you know. I was really lucky. I had Hall of Famers to teach me back in the day, and I learned a lot of great techniques. You know, I learned, uh, I learned, how, to, I learned how to play and move the disc around. So it's fun to go out with the young guys now and really just work with them on their game and, and talk to them about angle shooting and you know, different stabilities and how, how to approach specific shots. And, 
you know, there's no, there's no one right way to do it. So it's fun to go and just play around and then kind of be a caddy for the young dudes while we're, while we're playing, but then talking them through some of these shots or, or having them throw a second shot and be like, we'll mm-hmm. try this. And you know, when they're young, it's just, they pick it up like that. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, that's it. Good. So yeah, I'd say those are the guys I'm really looking forward to. I was going to say over in Europe, I mean, I could name a few right off the bat, you know, Knut, Knut Holland, Blyer from Iceland, mm-hmm. super talented, you know, um, you got young guys. Like I, I love watching Lucas Rokinen play. I really like Lucas. I've known him for a minute now. Vino. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of good young players. And I know a few more, was it Nicholas is coming over as well. There's going to be a few Finns this year. So it's going to be awesome, man. I honestly, I'm, I might just have to step back a little bit and just kind of watch. You know, <laughs> Katie, Katie, uh, yeah, for sure. Just to kind of take it all in, you know, so I'm excited. It's going to be a good year. It's going to be a crazy year, I think, at least. It's, it's happening, man. You know, like um, I'm grateful for my sponsors. They stick sticking with me, you know, I worked it, worked out a new deal with Innova for three years, which is awesome. And um, Good to hear, good to hear. Yeah, super stoked uh, moving forward with Millennium and kind of uh, running the team and I'm working on building a culture there too, which is, which is really fun. And everything else will just sort itself out. I figure, mm-hmm. you know, if I, if I'm making, if you make putts, everything's okay. <laughs> you know, it doesn't really matter. As long as you make some putts, it's, uh, it's all fun and dandy. Is there anyone else you want to thank? Texas Chainwreck Pro Shop. Um, my girlfriend for everything she does, Casey Jean. Um, just, just a powerhouse behind the scenes, you know, she should be tournament director of the year. It's unbelievable. Um, she's worth at least three or four on your staff. So, um, you know, all the people that helped me up till this point, um, San Francisco Coffee Company, um, uh, my good friend DJ at Shutter, Shutter Screen Print. Um, DJ really helped everything. Um, Ian Power, Rose City Disc Golf Club, Longview Disc Golf Association. You know, my local guys, mm-hmm. um, all, the, all the players that come and play my tournaments. Thank you. And and to the people of Estonia that, that I haven't met or that I can't wait to see again, I really look forward to coming back and um, we'll figure it out. And hopefully when I do, we'll make it a, for a couple weeks and be able to go enjoy ourselves and have a little fun too. But as a final question from my side, maybe what would be the biggest tip um, or um, like um, know-how that you would give to starting or beginner or let's say advanced or intermediate players i think that starting with slower discs is really important i think that um you know maybe speed six and seven should be kind of uh should be your ceiling at the beginning you know if you're if you're new to the game really try to throw some slower stuff because they're going to show you how to control the disc and control the angles Um, and once you get the angles down then you can kind of bump up the speeds but until then I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with any 12 speed, 11 speed stuff. I mean, nine, nine speed is probably the fastest I'd go. And that would be like a road runner or something, you know, um, that'll help. That'll help you in the, in the beginning. So if you're just starting work mm-hmm. on your mid ranges, um, and maybe check out an Eagle or a T-bird, those are about the fastest you need out of the gate. Don't be fooled. They have a lot of glide. They can go really, really far if you do them right. Um, it doesn't have to be the speed of the disc. Excuse me. The speed of the disc doesn't dictate how far it's going to go. That's going to mm-hmm. be the glide and the spin. So mm-hmm. that's probably uh, one of the biggest tips. And uh, practice your putting. You can kind of start to tilt it down and really play the stability of the disc. And uh, you can just do a lot with them. And um, I think I think to anyone that's new that's just starting, you know, keep an open mind and and try to go and watch some of them. If you see somebody doing something really good you know, don't be, don't be shy in, in asking them for advice. You know, mm-hmm. I think that most disc golfers are willing to give, um, to give their two cents and their advice to you if you, if you want it. So, and most importantly, enjoy, you know, that's why we all do it. Um, I'm really, really lucky. I feel grateful that I get to call disc golf my job. Um, but I also work really hard to not have a job. So. <laughs> Actually, so this is my 16th on tour. This is my 20th year. Big two zero, yeah. 20th year playing pro. 20 years in the pros, baby. Going to make it a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It definitely needs to be a good one. Uh, <laughs> If it's so, not, I'm writing a book. 
<laughs> now you have a, you know you have a lot to talk, you know write about now as well you've seen i bet you can you've seen everything basically out there so <laughs> close no. Close. Yeah. There's always something to see, though, you know, and that's the that's the beauty of adventure and tour. And, and that's part of the allure of being able to do this. You know, you kind of you get to go on this adventure and and, you know, go find your game, go find yourself on the course. And and you probably find a lot of good friends, too. So, yeah, I um, want to thank everybody for tuning in. Anybody that's still with us. Appreciate that. Yeah. And, you know, I thank, you know, all the listeners as well and all the people who tuned in to watch this interview and you know, i think this is it and i have run out all, all of my questions and i really thank you for joining uh, i know it was an early morning for you but you know it's it, it was really nice to talk to you and really thank you for joining and thank everybody for watching <laughs>